Welcome to lesson 1.5, Patterns and Relations in Tables. I'm looking on page 25 and 26 in our textbook, um, if you wanted to follow along. Uh, the focus of this lesson is to create a table of values for a relation. Um, so we're going to start, and I think this should be a review from grade 6, the input and output machine. And an input-output machine represents um, a relation. So in this case, our relation here is 2n plus 1, where n is related to 2n plus 1. And just as a review, um, the way an input-output machine works is um, this side on the left is what you input into the relation, and then your output is kind of the solution or the answer uh, to that expression. Um, so for an example, um, into this input-output machine, if I was to input n equals 8, um, and then I input the n for that equation. So I'm just going to write it out here. So I just replace my variable with 8. Uh, 2 multiplied by 8 added to 1. So 2 times 8 is 16 plus 1. So that would equal 17. So my output would be 17 for that example. However, in this lesson, uh, we're going to move away from the actual input-output machine, and we're going to work a little bit more with tables. So this first example that we're going to do would be a situation where you have an algebraic expression, and you're going to follow the same kind of process as the input-output machine, but you're going to record your um, input and your output into a table like this one here. So we're going to use the same uh, expression as we did in the first example, which was 2n plus 1. So n in this situation would be our input. So when we input the number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6, we will come up with our output. So our output would be for the expression 2n plus 1. And this input-output um, relates n to 2n plus 1. That's why we would call this a relation, because this variable relates to this um, expression, algebraic expression. So when we input the number 1 into our expression, we would come up with 2 multiplied by 1 plus 1. So 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1, so that would equal 3. So then our output for 2n plus 1, when our input is 1, would be 3. Um, if we wanted to input 2, we would just replace our variable whoops, with 2 plus 1. So 2 multiplied by 2 is 4 plus 1. So our output for 2 would be 5. For 3, we multiply, sorry, we replace our variable with 3. So 2 multiplied by 3 is 6. 6 plus 1 is 7. So when our input is 3, our output is 7. We'll do one more. For 4, we replace our variable, which is n, with 4. Uh, 2 multiplied by 4 is 8. 8 plus 1. Our output would be 9. And I'll just use mental math to finish the last two. So if my input is 5, I would go 2 multiplied by 5, which is 10. 10 added to 1 is 11. And then for the last one, 6 multiplied by 2 is 12, and 12 plus 1 is 13. So this is an example of how you use a table to represent your input and output and the relation when you have an algebraic expression given to you. So in the first example that we did, um, the algebraic expression was given to us, and we used that to figure out um, the input and the output numbers for our table. However, the second sort of question that you might come across is when you have your input and your output numbers given to you, but the question will ask you, um, what 
is the algebraic expression to relate the input and the output numbers here. Um, so this sort of method it does involve a little bit of guessing and checking, but it also requires you to look at patterns uh, between your input and your output numbers. So I might start just by looking at these numbers and seeing if I can figure out a relationship between them. So I see that uh, 1 and 2, so I know I could maybe add 1 or I might multiply by 2, but neither of those work to get from 2 to 5 because if I multiply by 2, that gives me 4. And if I only add one, it gives me three. So I know that those um, probably aren't part of the algebraic expression uh, to relate these input and output numbers. So this is where we want to look for patterns um, in our input and output table. So I'm going to start with my input side and see what the relationship between these. To get from one to two, I'm adding one. From two to three, I'm also adding one. From three to four, I'm adding 1, and from 4 to 5, I'm adding 1. Let's look at our output side. To get from 2 to 5, I'm adding 3. To get from 5 to 8, I'm also adding 3, so I'm seeing a pattern developing. To get from 8 to 11, I'm adding 3, and 11 to 14, I'm adding 3. So because my output is increasing by 3 each time, I know that 3n is likely part of my algebraic expression here. However, I know that it's not the only part because if this was my algebraic expression, if I was to input 1 into this expression, 3 multiplied by 1, that would give me 3, and that does not match up with my output number. But I'm going to just keep going with this for my input and output table. So 3 multiplied by 2 equals 6, so I see that it does not match my 5 either. So I'm just going to finish this off. 3 multiplied by 3 is 9. 3 multiplied by 4 is 12. And 3 multiplied by 5 is 15. So like I said, I've already noticed that this is not the algebraic expression to represent this input and output um, here because these numbers do not match my output. However, I do notice a little bit of a pattern emerging um, with these numbers. So how do I get from 3, 3 here to 2? I subtract 1. How do I get from 6 here to 5? I'm subtracting 1. So I'm noticing that if I subtract 1 from each of these solutions, I am coming up with the output in my original table. So therefore, my expression then becomes 3n subtract 1. So if that is my new expression, let's just try a couple examples just to make sure that um, if I'm using this um, expression that it, it um, is true for all of my input and output numbers. So if my input is n, my output is 3n minus 1. Let's see if that relation works. So if I input the number 1, 3 multiplied by 1 is 3, subtract 1, that equals 2, so that matches. If I do the number 2, 3 multiplied by 2, subtract 1, that's 6 minus 1 equals 5. Okay, great, that matches. Let's try one more because it's always good to test every input to make sure um, that it applies with all. 3 multiplied by 3, subtract 1, that's 9, subtract 1, which is 8. Great, it matches. So you would just do it for 4 and 5 just to make sure but it looks like I've solved and I've found the relation for my input-output table, which is n relates to 3n minus 1. So when n is 1, 3n minus 1 is 2. So that's the relation here. And the algebraic expression uh, to make my input and output true would be 3n minus 1.